Now is a good time to bring in former Buckeye James Laurinaitis. He joins us on the phone. Uh, James, first, let's get your reaction to the news that Urban Meyer is done after the Rose Bowl. Yeah, well, I was shocked, um, you know, only at the timing of it. Uh, I wasn't shocked at the actual result, but I was shocked at just the idea that uh, it happened right now. And then you start to kind of dig into it a little bit uh, and realize, you know, the first signing period and all of that stuff. Uh, that it made sense to kind of get out ahead of it for recruiting uh, purposes and all of that. Um, but just after settling in a little bit, you start to kind of look back at his career and just recognize uh, the greatness and what he's done for Ohio State and for the Big Ten. What about it uh, just made you shocked? Because a lot of people are saying that they, they could see it. In fact, Jerry Durner was saying he thought it wouldn't be surprised if it happened sooner. Just what exactly had you shocked about the announcement today? Uh, maybe it was the fact that I was cooking an omelet and I was getting prepared to eat <laughs> breakfast. That just kind of it kind of hit me off guard. Uh, I thought that he would coach the Rose Bowl and then maybe get through, um, you know, to like a Bob Stoops type thing at Oklahoma where you got through the recruiting cycle and then you kind of stepped down. But um, you could kind of sense after the Michigan game the emotion that Shelly Meyer showed, the emotion he showed with his kids, with his grandson. Um, it just kind of felt different. He got choked up in the press conference at one point, uh, which is not urban-like. Uh, so you kind of had a sense that maybe this would come. Um, really, you know, I tried to talk to some other people that are around the program, and they started to feel that maybe it swung the 60-40 that he would stay and keep coaching. Um, and so I just think the fact that it was, you know, this morning and I was, I was cooking a delicious breakfast, that, that it really shocked me. Okay, gotcha. So it's interesting, though, that you bring up uh, that Michigan game because Glenn keeps saying that because he's an Ohio State guy, he thinks that is just a huge part of his legacy, that he is unbeaten against Michigan. As an Ohio State guy yourself, what would you say about his legacy and how much does something like that play into it? That's, I mean, that's absolutely uh, one of the, the first kind of bullet points that Ohio State fans will remember is the fact that he's undefeated against them. He's 7-0. I mean, he has as many wins versus that team uh, as he does regular season losses, which is unbelievable. Uh, you look at what he's done. I, I look at not only what he's done in that game, but I also look at what he's done for the Big Ten. And, and you know, going on our radio show this morning, we talked about how he always had this relentless pursuit and push of excellence. He was always chasing Excellent, and he was pushing the envelope forward, not only for Ohio State, but for the Big Ten in general. If you remember the first media days, he comes out talking about how the Big Ten needs to get better. There's no, you know, they don't recruit well enough. Uh, the league's, you know, not where it needs to be. And he pushed everything forward, and he got assistant coaches paid higher. He's pushed this conference forward, and and really brought it to where it is uh, today. And. He's done. I think that's part of his legacy is not only what he's done here at Ohio State because Jim Trestle had set the bar pretty high, and he had even you know, out, you know, succeeded that level of expectation for Ohio State fans and really across the Big Ten for Big Ten football. James, being in Columbus, have you gotten a sense for uh, how the fans are reacting and just what is it like in Columbus right now? Well, a lot of people um, are reacting uh, with some optimism about Ryan Day. Uh, there obviously there's a lot of uh, gratefulness for Coach Meyer. Um, you know, to be honest, I would say 80% of the people we've talked to today was, you know, a lot of optimism for what Coach Day uh, will bring to the table. Um, I think that Ryan Day had an awesome three games that he had, but it's always hard to replace a legend you know coach mason would probably know better about the coaching profession and all that but it's hard to step into the shoes of somebody who is as successful as urban meyer i mean urban meyer has won 11 games each and every season that he had been at ohio state that's extremely hard to do uh and so to just assume that this train keeps rolling um uh, is hard and that's not a discredit to ryan day at all we don't know maybe he maybe he does elevate the program even more we don't know but i just know it's hard uh with the standard that Coach Meyer has kind of set to just assume that this um, thing kind of keeps going in that standard of success. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm anxious to see the press conference and just kind of see um, what he says about everything. But with the news, the extension for Ryan, it shows that Gene Smith is committed to him uh, taking over this program. And James, of course, the question that comes up when talking about Urban Meyer is, do you think this is it for him, that he is done coaching now? Well, you know, I do, and it's hard to see, you know, where his health is right in a couple of years. I know, you know, we mentioned how much he's always pushed and pursued excellence, so it's going to be hard for him, you know, to, to sit back and not 
um, be involved and to be building a program and pushing forward. When you're that competitive, it's, it's going to be extremely tough. Um, but I do think that the health issues uh, are real. And, and look, there's, there's other things to this, right? Urban Meyer's uh, son-in-law um, is, is one of the coaches on staff. He could possibly get a permanent role with Ryan Day. Um, his daughter, uh, Nikki, who, you know, she's married to him. She's about to have um, their second child so that's a you know another grandson in the mix so you know by everyone that's talked to coach he plans to stick around columbus ohio and, and to be around in kind of some way shape or form um we don't really know all those details right and we'll learn more at two but there is some family connections to the program um that i think would keep him up here around town and and keep him from kind of going to another spot and, and chasing that coaching thing anymore because I, I think he really wants to value that family time now and and be a grandpa James Laurinaitis, former Ohio State linebacker, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure it'll be a busy day there. Thanks for having me. In Columbus.